Father, we have come this morning asking that you will speak to us by your word, that you will speak to us by your spirit. Let someone's destiny find expression as a result of today's teaching. Let someone receive restoration. Let someone's walk with you be jacked back to life. Let someone find hope and healing. We vow to give you all the praise. Holy Spirit, we declare that you have unrestrained access. Access to our hearts, access to our minds. Do with us and do to us as you please. And let the Lord be glorified. For in Jesus' mighty name we pray. Is it all right if I request that you walk up to two or three or four or five, if you have the strength, add six or seven people and just gently tell them good morning and God bless you. I'll do the counting while you walk. So this is one. Some of you are still on two. hallelujah god bless you please you may return to your seat rejoicing and be seated the psalmist said i was glad when they said unto me let us go to the house of the lord there are things that only happen in the house of the lord hallelujah i want to sincerely thank the foundations of society for this opportunity it gives me great joy every time I have the honor of bringing God's word to his people because I have learned from scripture and I've learned by experience that God's method has always been and will always be his word. He appears unto men principally by his word. He sets men free principally by his word and ye shall know the truth and the truth shall make you free even when it comes to healing and deliverance is through his word he sent forth his word and his word he led them and delivered them from all their infirmities or destructions and so i place a lot of value on the word of god and it's always my intent as i teach the word that beyond the thoughts that i share that people will cultivate a hunger and a passion first for god and then for his word a man who rejects the word of god has rejected everything god can offer let me say that again a man who as an act of his or her will chooses to reject the word of god has also rejected everything that god can offer I pray that God will bless our hearts in Jesus name and then I think it's it's also wise to just remind us to do well to get some of these teachings you know sometimes in conferences like this no matter how attentive you are there are some things you just will not hear or at least will not get hallelujah and so faith comes by hearing and hearing the first hearing is unto awareness the second hearing is unto understanding it is not just what you are aware of that changes you it is what you understand hallelujah the utopian enoch opened the scripture and was reading and when philip came he said understandest what thou readest so just because you are interacting with truth does not mean you have received it he said how can i accept some man explain it to me hallelujah so yesterday we took our time to just examine from scripture the greatness of this great god we called him king of kings according to scripture and lord of lords and we thank god for how god took us through the service this morning i thought to teach um on the subject of prayer since this is a prayer conference i thought to wrap up my session by sharing a few very important thoughts as it relates to prayer the foundation for an excelling life generally speaking 
is your relationship with God. According to scripture, any man is already on the path to victory and excellence when you take God seriously. The foundation for an excelling life at any level is your relationship with God. That means when you pursue any other thing higher and greater than your relationship with God, you stand the risk of losing out of the potential to become an exceptional person. Hallelujah. The Bible says in 2 Chronicles 26 and verse 5, talking about Uzziah, 2 Chronicles 26 and verse 5, it says, for as long as he sought the Lord, the Lord made him, Uzziah, to prosper. For as long as he sought the Lord, Second Chronicles 26 and verse 5, the Lord made him. It is God that makes men to prosper. Paul can plant, Apollo can water, but increase is exclusively of the Lord. Are we together? Spirituality, I wrote here, is the foundation for true dominion and exploits in the kingdom. Spirituality is the foundation for true dominion and exploits in the kingdom. That means for every believer who seeks to walk in the experience of dominion. Recall yesterday we said we learn and know about us when we learn and know about him. So one of the reasons why we study God is to be able to understand ourselves we were created in his image and his likeness and the only way to really know who we are is to know who he is so we don't just study god because we love him we don't just study god because we want to appreciate the vastness of his greatness but we study him in order to discover ourselves the bible says as he is so are we not in the, the the life after here and now so if it is true that he's king of kings and if it's true that he's lord of all it gets to show that there must be that dominion component within us and when we understand his greatness his ability to exact power and influence over creation we must be able to follow same in fact the bible says let them have dominion and then it begins to list all of the spheres the birds of the air the fowl the cattle and everything that creeps upon the earth defines for us the jurisdiction of our, our dominion hallelujah and one of the major enhancers to spirituality is understanding prayer if it is true that spirituality is the bedrock and the foundation for an excelling life not just spiritually speaking it starts with your spiritual life but it spills over to every aspect of your life the the control room of any man's greatness in the kingdom is the health and the strength of your spiritual life and there are many enhancers to spirituality i'll just pick on one of them and that becomes my discussion for the time that we have the health of your prayer life your understanding the prayer ministry becomes a principal enhancer to your spirituality there is no man there is no woman who will become spiritual to god's standard without understanding prayer many people pray but very few people understand prayer hallelujah yeah. it is important to be efficient in prayer and since this is a prayer conference i just thought to share a few things that can help us maximize our prayer adventure do you know why prayer meetings in many circles um, usually don't come with a lot of motivation two reasons one because many people do not get results from their prayer many people do not get results from their prayer generally speaking nobody leaves what works do you agree with me on that the moment you try or test a thing and it works you are motivated to stay there so the number one reason for the laxity in prayer extends to prayer meetings of all sorts is because the truth is most people cannot they do not have consistency of results through prayer 
and so because of that they hardly have an appreciation for the prayer ministry instinctively they know that is one of the requirements for a believer's growth and excelling but since they have not gotten results there they pay very less attention to it the second reason is most people have not been taught that you are actually taught to pray prayer is not just something you do prayer like driving or any other spiritual adventure you are taught to pray there are people who learned how to drive without anyone driving them or teaching them and they may not know the mistakes they are making just because the car is moving in obedience until they face a situation that requires structured knowledge that's when they will find out that even though they've driven successfully for years there were things they did not know about driving for instance when they relocate abroad they will fail the driving test helplessly to their shame they say look i've driven from abuja to lagos many times how dare you fail me cheaply like this that is when they will realize that it's not just about moving a vehicle there is understanding most people pray some of them were born from prayerful families by prayerful families pass through prayerful circles but the truth is that not many believers have been taught to pray the disciples of jesus as the disciples of john they saw john attempt to mentor them in the area of prayer and they tried everything john said and they themselves began to pray they were frustrated at a point because their prayer was not producing power then they came to jesus according to luke's synoptic account and they said teach us to pray as john taught his disciples to pray so their issue was not prayerlessness it was inefficiency in prayer they were not getting results they were honestly praying saying whatever it is and it was not producing power but they noticed jesus he did not waste words every word had a return on that investment if he spoke to storms he returned with results if he spoke to situations he spoke to men he spoke to circumstances it was such an admirable sight to behold and they had to confront him one day to say don't leave us this way teach us to pray bring efficiency to our prayer adventure are we together many believers will pray if they have answers through prayer many believers will not have to be coerced into prayer ministry prayer meetings you know cajoled and so on and so forth it is because most people are frustrated some indefinitely until they backslidden as far as prayer is concerned and then we pray all kinds of funny prayers and don't get answers one thing we need to know as a rule of thumb is that God is touched with the feelings of your infirmity but he only responds as his word allows there are rules of engagement even in the way God responds to man God does not respond to man emotionally he has submitted himself to his word himself the bible says he exalts his word even above his name above his office above his reputation so you would think that just because you are crying and you know lamenting god will be obliged to move he is touched with the feelings of your infirmity that is called compassion but he's moved by his word if god were moved emotionally the first people he will rescue are children not even you and yet you can watch children die and watch all kinds of catastrophic things happen in our world and here is a god who the bible calls an epitome of love with the all-seeing eye seated on his throne how could he watch such mayhem happen across the earth and not do anything about it it is the reason why trying to buy up sympathy spiritually will only end us in frustration there are rules that produce victory god is touched with the feelings of your infirmity but please listen to me as we delve into this subject of prayer he's only moved by his word not even the tears of jesus could stop that which had was written that from the foundations of the earth the lamb was slain and that without the shedding of blood there is no remission of sin you will think the tears of his only begotten son not even the blood that was flowing from the lacerations could turn the heart of god as compassionate as he is he still watched his son die <laughs> are we together 
So the wise saying, one day go better, unfortunately does not work. It consoles, but it does not work. It comforts, but it does not work. Time will not change anything by default. You will have to know how to engage the word, even in prayer. Can we look at a few things about prayer? Thank you, Jesus. Just one scripture. Ephesians chapter 6, please. We will read 17 and 18. Contextually, Paul is wrapping up his discourse with the church in Ephesus. And he starts from verse 10 by saying, Finally, brethren, he says, Be strong in the Lord. He's giving them his final words now. And he says, be strong in the Lord and in the power of his might. Are we together now? Yes. Now, the book of Ephesians is very interesting theologically because it contains, according to many theological thoughts, it contains about the richest truth as far as the believer's work is concerned. Paul took out time to give a sound exegesis as far as the believer's work is concerned. He spoke about his the believers position of advantage seated with christ he spoke about the work of the believer the character that befits a believer's experience he talks about the demonic forces that try to antagonize and resist believers and he teaches us how to fight against the wiles of the enemy and he's wrapping up his discourse from verse 10. he now says be strong in the lord and in the power of his might then he tells us to put on the whole armor not some the whole armor to the end that we may be able to stand against the wiles or the strategies of the devil are we still together then he begins to describe that armory he says for your information know this as you sojourn that we wrestle not against flesh and blood but against principalities powers rulers of the darkness of this world against spiritual wickedness that are domiciled within the heavenly places to that end he begins to describe the believers armory take on the whole armor of god that you may be able to withstand the evil day and then he says haven't done all to stand he begins his listing now he says stand therefore having your loins girt about with truth so truth is an armor righteousness is another armor next verse please he talks about the preparation of the gospel of peace as an armor he talks about the shield of faith then he says with this shield of faith you sustain the ability to quench all not some all the fiery darts of the wicked and then he says to take the helmet of salvation and the sword of the spirit which is the word of god and then he says verse 18 this is where we are finally arriving at now let's let's read together ready one to read praying hold on praying always with all prayer can we have niv if it's possible niv i'd appreciate niv niv says praying always with all kinds of prayer remember I, I took out time to journey with you from verse 10 so that you understand the flow of the discourse. Don't forget his thoughts. He's teaching you how to stand. He's teaching you how to prevail. He gives you an information that you are in a world where you are not alone. Are we together? That the Satan is there with his whole arsenal. And now he's teaching you how to put on the whole armor of God. So this scripture right there is a continuation the whole armor of god and then he says pray in the spirit on all occasions then he says with all kinds of prayer that means there are different kinds and different models of prayer are we together now did i give you my topic for this morning i'm teaching on scriptural prayer models scriptural prayer models scriptural prayer models from this scripture so the bible says to pray in the spirit on all occasions but then he says part of the strategy for you remaining victorious as a believer is to know and deploy all kinds of prayers please say after me all kinds of prayers hallelujah 
all kinds of prayers the bible says in mark chapter mark chapter 24 i believe now jesus was speaking to the the fig tree what scripture is that remind me he says verily verily i say unto you that whatsoever things ye desire when ye pray believe that thou receivest them and you shall find them that should be mark 11 and verse 24 the discussion starts from verse 21 then ends at 24 please give us 24 so he says whatsoever things ye desire did i get that right 24 thank you when ye pray there is a connection between desires prayer believing and their manifestation are we together in luke chapter 18 and verse 1 the bible says he spake a parable to the end that men ought always to pray always consistency to pray and not to faint first thessalonians chapter 5 and verse 17 he says pray without ceasing doesn't mean to pray from morning till night it means be consistent that the prayer adventure becomes profitable when it is consistently practiced are we together james chapter 5 and verse 13 he says is any man afflicted let him pray let him pray let him pray a few verses afterwards he says the fervent and effectual prayer of the righteous availed much even for jesus as our model jesus as our pattern man in luke chapter 9 from verse 28 to 29 at the mount of transfiguration the bible says verse 29 luke 9 29 as he prayed as he prayed as he prayed jesus prayed as he prayed john 17 and verse 1 jesus lifted up his eyes to the heavens and prayed john 17 verse 1 he prayed father the hour is come glorify now your son hallelujah that your son may glorify thee we see scattered through scripture that jesus prayed he invested time praying any believer who must reign and triumph exerting dominion over this cosmos must pray but prayer comes with understanding and so i want to examine with us very quickly at least four models of prayer the bible mandates that we pray with all kinds of prayer all kinds of prayer i'm hoping that from this discussion someone's prayer life will become richer because you'll be able to incorporate other dimensions that may not have been captured in your prayer life are you ready the first model of prayer according to scripture in no particular order is called praying in the spirit what you call deploying the prayer language of tongues praying in the spirit generally speaking praying in the spirit is not limited to praying in tongues but classically speaking every time we talk about praying in the spirit it is safe to assume the bible is talking about praying using the prayer language of tongues first corinthians 14 and verse 15 this is the first prayer model that i want to introduce to us as an advantage to all believers it's been a bone of contention for many years and especially among many religious circles as to the value or the necessity of sustaining the ability to pray in tongues this has been and sadly remains a, a you know a, a reason for argument but paul speaks here and he says what is it then he says i will pray with the spirit please follow carefully then he says i will pray with the understanding also clearly he tells you now that they do not mean the same thing he said i will pray in the spirit or with the spirit and then i will pray with my understanding the prayer language is not the same as the gift of diverse kinds of tongues this is where i think there's been an age-long confusion hallelujah because paul said in first corinthians when you read chapter 12 down to 13 and 14 he says do all speak with tongues 
and so most people will mistake that to mean that the prayer language of tongues is not for everyone remember when you approach scripture contextually he was talking about the gifts of the spirit and he made a statement there that the gift of the spirit is to profit without that means the gift of the spirit is not necessarily for personal edification it empowers the individual to be a blessing to the church are we together now when he gets to chapter 14 now he says chapter 14 and verse 2 he says please give it to us verse 2 and then verse 4 first corinthians chapter 14 he that speaketh in an unknown tongue watch this now he speaketh not unto men immediately that tells you it is not part of the gift of the spirit he's talking about because all the gift of the spirit is to profit withal but this now he's speaking about tongues as a strategy for personal edification he says he speaks unto god for no man understandeth him how be it he speaketh in the spirit and the spirit he speaketh mysteries very powerful hallelujah every believer that does not engage praying in the spirit will rob himself or herself will rob their destinies of many 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 dimensions of the blessings that come from prayer what is praying in the spirit or what is praying in tongues you are allowing the spirit of god please listen you are allowing the spirit of god to use your vocal cords your faculties to express prayer in a language you may not learn and understand how be it your confidence is that the spirit of god is number one called the spirit of truth so that even though you do not understand what you are saying you trust according to scripture that he's praying out to you the will of god are we together now and so when you begin to pray in the spirit it does not make sense to you looks like you are praying gibberish however the bible tells you that we do not know how to pray for as we ought to that means it is a limitation in all men we are limited we do not even understand what our problems are you can be praying for headache whereas the problem is a demonic attack and so the bible says that god in knowing this deficiency in men he supplemented that by granting us access to this prayer language hallelujah so when you engage in the prayer language it is important for you to know that you're not just fulfilling a religious ritual you are allowing the spirit of god to take advantage of your faculties and to express the will of god in prayer you can trust everything that is said in the prayer language because it is the holy spirit praying through you making intercession through you hallelujah and I remember many years ago when you know before god brought us to this level i used to have the time to minister the baptism of the holy spirit over people one by one and most times people's confusion was the fact that they thought their their tongues were not sounding very professional what is ba -ba 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 -ba? and what have you mean that thing is really that doesn't really sound intelligent now that's the problem with men because everything we believe must come through the sieve of intellect and the bible says a natural man cannot receive the things of the spirit the prayer language now you see in english every time you want to tell me to step forward you will say come so c-o-m-e always means step forward doesn't necessarily have any other meaning but in the realm of the spirit just because your mind thinks you are repeating the same word it doesn't mean you are saying the same thing do you understand this now you need to understand this now so you the problem is the conflict between intellect and spirit communication i give you an example of spirit communication two in the bible in fact number one is called mene mene tekel ufersen did you ever read of something like that look at the interpreting the, the interpretation of just just four letter words to the intellect mene alone means oh king you have been weighed in a balance and you have been found wanting my god so imagine what you say in 15 minutes of prayer that was not a babylonian language it was a spirit communication it took daniel he was being in, he had to interpret it can i give you another one eloi eloi lamak sabak tanai the bible says which being interpreted 
it had to be interpreted it's not a heavenly language it was not a jewish language eloi eloi lamak sabak tanai was jesus communicating the bible says which being interpreted did you see that which being interpreted nobody on earth would have been able to decipher what he said my god my god why hast thou forsaken me so don't when you pray in the spirit don't limit yourself to the intelligence of it this man's tongue sounds nice it looks like he's the real holy spirit working with this guy for mine i don't know what kind of spirit took over me with this nonsense i'm speaking the moment you allow the devil to do that you have been robbed of an opportunity please look at me how many of you laugh you just laughed now eh you started laughing as a baby question who taught you who gave you an opportunity to rehearse how many of you cry have you ever taken note of the way you laugh or the way you cry have you ever been embarrassed by how you laugh or cry it's the same thing they are all languages laughter is a language crying is a language are you getting it now so when people say how can i communicate something i've never learned teach them that they laughed without rehearsal they cried without rehearsal hmm. scriptural prayer models pray in the spirit pray in the spirit pray in the spirit there are many things that happen at once when we pray in the spirit there's no time to be able to go into all that detail we are just taking this at an elementary level boy i will tell you three things that happens when you pray in the spirit number one you build power you build power acts chapter 1 and verse 8 you shall receive power acts chapter 2 from verse 1 to 4 they receive tongues jesus never said you will receive tongues when the holy spirit comes he said you will receive power but in acts chapter 2 what they received was a prayer language that means there is a relationship between praying in the spirit and accessing spiritual power hallelujah if i tell you you will receive five thousand dollars and by the time you meet me i give you a card it should tell you immediately that there is a relationship between the promise i made and something within that card am i right on that you don't throw away the card because most likely that card contains within it or is connected to an account that is worth five thousand dollars if you throw away the account because you are looking for five thousand dollars cash you may have thrown away your money so when he says you will receive power and what you receive is a prayer language it means there is a relationship between engaging in that prayer language and accessing or releasing spiritual power do you agree with me on that the bible lets us know furthermore that when we pray in the spirit we give the holy spirit an opportunity to draw into our lives the knowledge of the will of god that no man knows what is in the heart of man except the spirit that is in that man so also no man knows what is in the heart of god except the spirit of god so as we pray we grant the holy spirit an opportunity to buy into the mind of the father and pull to your consciousness what the will of god is per time and per season for your life this is very powerful when we pray in the spirit among the many things we receive is the knowledge of the will of god concerning the various matters in our lives now the truth is that you may not find the answer to your problem directly from scripture you may not find your name you may not find in scripture whether you should live in the island or in the mainland are we together you may not find in scripture whether you should get into a dry cleaning business or a restaurant you may not directly find that but as you pray in the spirit among the many things that happens to you is that the holy spirit is able to buy into the wisdom of god and to communicate to you that which is consistent with your blueprint part time it is risky to take many destiny defining decisions without praying in the spirit it will always look like you are correct till you find out you veered away from the will of god for many of us the reason why we keep recycling seasons of pain is because we have not taken advantage of this provision are we together praying in the spirit praying in the spirit let me jump to the second model are we learning already 
is this helping someone's prayer life so the next time the devil comes with his tricks to waste your time while you pray you rebuke him and say if you did not come to me while i was laughing then don't come to me while i'm praying because it's a business between me and the father are we together now number two the second model of of prayer that many believers do not understand they do not even know it is prayer is declaring scripture in prayer my goodness my god declaring scripture in prayer not just quoting uh -uh. there is a difference and i'm going to show you now just because you are quoting scripture does not mean you are carrying out this model of prayer it is a powerful model of prayer to declare scripture psalms 107 2 and 3 please my god declaring scripture in prayer the bible says let the redeemed of the lord please help me say so what is the platform that allows them to say so let the redeemed of the lord say so what is this model of prayer please watch this so you take scripture and personalize it you put yourself in the experience of that word and you declare it are we together now the bible says to bring forth your strong reasons to bring forth present your cause your case saith the lord and he says bring forth your strong reason don't just say god are you not my father you can't be watching me like that that's not prayer that's not prayer let me show you how this model of prayer works that you can stand in the place of prayer and you are making prophetic declarations the lord is my light and my salvation i am blessed going out and blessed coming in this is you praying now are we together you become the prophet of your destiny at that point and as you are speaking you know because the bible says ecclesiastes i believe uh, chapter 8 let's try 3 or 4 that should be verse 4 please where the word of a king is did i get okay where the word of a king is is that in your bible there is what help me say power one more time where the word of a king is remember revelations 5 10 we have been made unto our god kings and priests and we shall reign on earth that means every time you make these declarations you are not just speaking to the air you are programming realities over your destiny believe this i am blessed in the city and blessed in the country i obey the lord and i serve him therefore i enjoy prosperity my days in prosperity my years in pleasure this is you declaring scripture a thousand fall by my side and ten thousand by my right side none shall hurt me with my eyes shall i see and behold the reward of the wicked the lord is my light and my salvation of whom shall i be afraid of are we together now yes they may come against me in one way but they will scatter in seven ways i am the delight of the lord i shall not die but live and declare this is a prayer model it's a prayer model most believers do not have a rich prayer life because they do not even know here's how the average believer prays father you are the king of kings and the lord of lords alpha and omega the beginning and the end and all and you, you see that they don't believe what they are saying now imagine you are god and somebody just comes you are the lion of tribe of judah the rose of sharon and the king of what is rose of sharon what is king of kings now i'm not being insulted please don't don't misunderstand me and at the end of it all that preamble is to really get to a point where they can bring down that pain and say god let's talk this rent <laughs> you sent manna from heaven they wasted it you sent another one i'm only asking you for rent in jesus name and the person will live actually believing that he prayed no you didn't pray you lamented agreed you cried agreed you were superstitious agreed but it was not prayer are we together 
because i have set my affection on him ah look if you the the key to manifesting this model is that your word bank must be full if you do not understand scripture you cannot pray this model because this model is a direct lifting from scripture you just put yourself there and make that declaration if you are poor in the word you cannot pray this model of prayer hallelujah this is the kind of the model of prayer that you use to counter negative speakings did you get that now that someone looks at you and says everybody in this unit is a useless person immediately a scripture wells from you it's not that you have to reply that person immediately because there's wisdom remember so someone looks at you and says, the way you are looking sick like this, as if you are going to die soon. A scripture just comes up. And the moment you find a chance, no, I, I shall not die. I shall not die. They are life to those who find them and health to their flesh. Are we together now? Yes. The advantage of this prayer is that it keeps reinforcing that truth to your consciousness. Because generally speaking, speaking reinforces the reality of thoughts. This is psychology. You agree with me on that? That anytime you speak a thing, the reality is still is crystallized in your mind again. You get up in the morning and you celebrate God. This is the day the Lord has made. Who made the day? Not the Lord and Satan. The Lord had made. Therefore I rejoice. Anything fighting my joy today in the name of Jesus I come against you. On account of that declaration. That means my joy was factored in the making of that day. So you find two people who leave their homes in the morning. Please listen. On the streets of Lagos. Someone leaves their home rejoicing and you say how are you? They say I'm fine. They are rejoicing. They get to the office and they say listen. Um we decided to choose one person to send abroad and you are the person who came to our mind and someone is frowning because a merry heart do it good like medicine are we together now but that a broken spirit can dry up the bones you get up in the morning and you declare in the name of jesus joy joy unspeakable full of glory no one disturbs my joy and peace today you have already frustrated the person satan has position and every time God sees that something good is coming, you notice things begin to happen around your life, your office, you are angry, your son wants to do something, you are almost going to slap him. No, it's an attack. Because it is with joy we reap. Are we together now? Scriptural prayer models. Number two, joy. Some of you right now, as you are here, God has been telling you cheer up since yesterday. What God sent from heaven has refused to arrive. Do you know why? Because gloominess and sadness has created an embargo. You believe what I'm teaching you? Yes. I am the head and not the tail. Please say it. Amen. Believe what you are saying. Say I'm the head and not the tail. Amen. Yes, sir. The Bible says you are above and not beneath. And while you are saying that because Satan is a deceiver, he will come and stand around the corridors of your mind and say, with that rent issue, what did you say again? The head? Hear yourself and you say it again. I am the head and not the tail. And then you can add, while we look not at the things that are seen, but the things that are unseen. For the things that are seen are temporal. Temporal. The court case, temporal. The issue of shame and reproach, temporal. Still looking for the school fees of your son, but temporal. Yes, the visa was declined, but temporal. Temporal. But the things that are unseen, unseen, not unreal. Unseen, not unreal. Just because you cannot see it does not mean it doesn't exist. Hallelujah. The works of my hands blessed god gives you a store you don't go there and start quarreling and say this lady today's your last day if you don't mm -mm, it's too you you are already frustrating your path to growth i'm showing you how to participate with heaven you step into your mall or your store excuse yourself for a minute and close the door in the name of jesus the bible says everything i do is blessed is it in your bible 
whatsoever he doeth help me whatsoever he doeth you step into that store lay your hands and say in the name of jesus god is bringing strategic people relationships are coming to me today not useless relationships destiny defining relationships troublemakers are far from my destiny god is bringing the right people you get up and you expect favor the bible says his messes are new every morning have you received today's own declaring scripture declaring scripture declaring scripture you get up and you find yourself that you you were somewhere you fell into a ditch and you died bring yourself back to life by waking up <laughs> that death in the dream should end there are we together and then you don't just get up and say god forbid god forbid is not prayer god forbid based on what you see the things that we keep saying that makes our prayer ineffective god forbid i know you are sincere but the realm of the spirit does not work like that there has to be a basis based on what the bible said i said before you life and death i said before you blessing and cursing who is god speaking to this morning he said choose life choose life one of the ways you choose life is to verbalize it if i tell you choose between this flower and this monitor one of the ways you by pointing and then you can say i choose the flower loud enough for me to hear you you cannot tell me you choose the flower then i give you this it means i'm a deceiver god says choose life choose life choose life when men say there is a casting down my declaration in the name of the lord and add your children in that confession that they shall say there is a lifting up i'm challenging every mother here don't keep quiet this is not the time to keep quiet satan is looking for families he would destroy looking for men that you will shred their testimonies do you know that the spirit of depression the first thing that the spirit of depression does is it brings you to a point of silence find out people who are depressed they've come to a point where they've given up on life and they just keep quiet sir you know there is a way and it just keeps quiet after five minutes he says that person is almost dying but thou oh lord had a shield for me my glory you lift my head but thou oh lord had a shield for me my glory the lifter up of my head sing it one more time but thou oh lord had a shield for me my glory you lift my head but thou, O oh Lord, had a shield for me. My glory, the nature of my head. Please sit down. Many of you have heard me say, there are some of you, the only thing that comes out of your mouth is, why is it that everybody hates me? First, you are a liar. Because it's impossible to be hated by everybody. You may have heard me say that. Even Satan is not hated by everybody. There are people who know that he's the devil and still love him. There are wives that agree to spend their lives with terrorists. Am I right on that? They know the person is an assassin, is a killer. And yet he went and met her parents and the lady was willing. Everybody cannot hate you. Is the devil deceiving you? And what you need is one person sent by God who loves you. One. How many? One. I tell you, one. How many people had to love Joseph to become a prime minister? 10, 15, 1. 1. 1. So when you get up in the morning, Father, in the name of Jesus, there has to be someone who delights in my son to hold his hands and lift him to be great. I'm calling that person forth by prophecy when jesus was born as a little baby there were wise men that saw the stars is that in your bible the bible says they took gifts of gold of frankincense and myrrh and they came to greet baby jesus not entrepreneur jesus not savior jesus 
declaring scripture declaring scripture declaring scripture go back home on your way home even if it's only one scripture you know weary life with that scripture speak it until it becomes a reality declare ye that thou might test be justified there are no assumptions in the spirit let me tell you the truth if i did not understand this model i submit to you by the integrity of god's word i would have died a long time ago a long time ago don't just accept everything that comes to your life build a garrison with the word and don't wait for someone to just speak it over you you are principally the first prophet of your life principally hallelujah the bible says i will multiply them they shall not be few i will glorify them they shall not be small speak that over your business the Bible says in Psalm 112, parents, this is a women conference. Blessed is the man that feared the Lord, who delighted greatly in his commands. His seed shall be mighty. As a mother, you would declare, I didn't give birth to pain. It's not my child that will send me to my grave. In the name of Jesus, every spirit trying to turn this boy to become a disappointment, I am not discouraged. I look beyond that stubborn child and I see a giant rising because the Bible says his seed shall be mighty see it shall be mighty we see it shall be mighty are we together you declare over this church that it's not only spiritually vibrant men and women who arise but people who are great people of means and people of capacity genesis 17 and verse 6 i will make thee exceeding fruitful he says give it to us please and i will make nations of thee and kings shall come out of thee not kings shall come to you does that sound like what comes out of a woman so what you are holding called a baby is a king royalty greatness you're my glory the lifter up of my head you're my glory So prayer model number one, let's do a quick recap. Praying in the spirit, praying in tongues. Number two, declaring scriptures in prayer. Can I give you number three? Number three is called the prayer of inquiry. Hmm. This is a very powerful model. Please follow carefully. The prayer of inquiry. That means you can, in the place of prayer, the purpose of that prayer is not to declare. The purpose of that prayer is to come back with answers. The prayer of inquiry. First Samuel chapter 30, please. And verse 8. First Samuel chapter 30. Is God helping someone's prayer life? Let's read it together, please, if you can see. Are you ready? One, two, read, please. And David inquired at the Lord, saying, Shall I pursue after this troop? Shall I overtake them? And he answered him, Pursue, for thou shalt surely overtake them, and without fail recover all. This is the kind of prayer to pray before you take major, sensitive, destiny-defining decisions the prayer of inquiry do you know why this prayer is important because the bible says there is a way that seemeth right unto a man believers listen to me there is a way that seemeth right unto a preacher there is a way that seemeth right unto a young graduate there is a way that seemeth right unto a nigerian but the bible says the end you can see it looking very attractive i hope you know satan does not use evil alone to destroy when he uses evil and you can detect it he will use good for instance a visa on your passport a visa on your passport does not necessarily mean god wants you to relocate now there's nothing wrong with relocating are we together but I'm saying that there are many times Satan will use good things to destroy you. Sometimes an employment letter can be the worst thing that would have happened to you. Hmm. What God intends to give you is not good against evil. It's life. 
because both good and evil came from the same tree so there are times that satan will use a lot of good if he sees that you are fighting bad friends he will bring good friends who can destroy you the most important thing is that you are destroyed are we together when satan came to jesus how many of you know that what he used for his temptation the raw material for tempting jesus was it is written he did not tell him go and take a bottle of some alcohol that the roman soldiers take no he came and said it is written he shall put his angels charge i mean if you hear someone quoting scripture that much you want that person to be your friend and yet the name of the person quoting it is satan so just because something carries the carriage of good i pray that god is helping someone this morning there are many good things that are destructive to your destiny i tell you sincerely many good things you must sustain the power to reject both good and bad things the programming that makes you frown on all at only bad things you would have given yourself cheaply to satan weapons are fashioned and fashioning is a product of study what is this person what does this person want at this point oh you are so lonely you need a good friend and satan will bring somebody who is sincere but not wise that person becomes a reason for your destruction everything you tell that person he or she will go and tell everybody because he brought somebody who has not worked with the weak the weakness of managing relationships the person is not evil the person is just not wise oh we are still trusting god for a child we say really okay let's pray and then the next thing you see another person sending you a text in the night that which you are looking for that i've heard about may god give you and you're saying where did this come from now <laughs> good things can destroy you many good things have destroyed destiny many many do you believe what you are hearing should i pursue should i overtake you see sometimes when all the variables are there chances are excellent that you may develop pride and not need god again the certificate is there my uncle is now a senator which is an advantage oh my my sister in america told me you just submit this there's an assurance that in one month your passport will be stamped at that point it doesn't make sense to ask god should i pursue because you suspect what if he says no in the presence of all these great opportunities do you know why many people don't ask god for answers they suspect that he will reject it and you are you are mostly right because the moment you start asking god that means you are saying i am willing to work with whatever you tell me the way we fight god is proof that we were not serious about asking him should i pursue you've already prepared the horse you've dressed the horse you've climbed on the chariot you are ready to go the horse has even started moving and say oh god should i pursue so that it will be on record that i ask you and god will say come back and he say i knew it i reject that spirit it can't be god the bible says the path of the job so you were not really serious about inquiring let me tell you how to hear from god be willing to accept any answer as a sign that you trust his will for your life if not your hearing will always be wrong i can tell you 90 percent of our prayer of inquiry we already have our answers what we are largely doing is hoping god agrees with you that's the truth how do i know that the difficulty the way we fight god back after he speaks if you are fortunate and your answer his answer is consistent with what you've always wanted then you now say now i knew it i knew it god should i start that business i already have my 10 million i'm not asking you for money just give me permission and god says go ahead and you rejoice say, i this is the kind of god i want to serve but while you are praying and god says that 10 million is not for you bring it to the king's court you say what did i say no god cannot do this kind of bad thing knowing how nigeria is now this is not god this is a familiar spirit and i curse that spirit god if it's you verify and your first dream becomes somebody that god uses maybe it's even me i will say obey god as he has said 
you get up and say i hate all these people no i don't <laughs> the prayer of inquiry is a very risky prayer adventure you must love god and trust him to delve into this one because it would disrupt many of your plans but one assurance i leave with you is the kind of glory that will come out of your life when god directs you when he led them when he led them moses said do not let us depart from here let me tell you this sometimes using our frame of mind and our frame of thinking our plans can be so beautiful based on how we've seen it but how many of you know that his thoughts are higher than your thoughts help me that his way is higher than your ways god's god's thoughts will always be infinitely better and greater than what you ever imagined but you see one thing with god is that he does not strive with the spirit of man for long there are people today who have lost in business because god told them they pretended they did not hear him when the holy spirit comes to you comes to you and you keep resisting him he will honor you and leave you but for that consequence you can be sure you'll go through it please ask God questions you don't need to ask God silly questions like um, should I wear a black shoe or a white shoe he says the answer is in your brain that one God has given you don't have to make a mockery of God like that but let me tell you I am convinced that in a man's life you will not make more than 10 or 20 destiny defining decisions destiny defining decisions are not many it is at such times when seasons are about to change when certain decisions involve God oh, for instance where do I relocate for the next 20 years with my children that's not something to make over coffee destinies will suffer from it am I wasting your time yes who do I marry how many children do I have Lord, there are five men coming and honestly, based on me, oh, this second one, this is the kind of potential I'm seeing there is very convincing. Is that true? You've not read of people who turn from grass, from uh, what was grace to grass, and others who went from grass to grace. You would have looked at David if you saw David in the wilderness and you took david to your home maybe they would drive david away but that was a king you were driving away honestly let me tell you to be carnally minded truly is death but to be spiritually minded is life and peace it is only god who knows the future of men's destinies and there are times you need to lock up yourself you have an opportunity for a great job an oil company and then god is calling you into ministry don't assume you can assume you are called into ministry and reject the oil company and find out you were not called into the fivefold ministry. You think I will say it the other way around? There are times where you are not called. The oil company was what you would have taken, and you reject it just assuming that because you will suffer as if God did not call you. And at a point, you say, What is wrong? And God will say, I called you generally, but not to this assignment. Every wrong decision wasting your destiny. Some of you made careless destiny decisions and prayed, may the God of mercy, I'm praying again, may the God of mercy help you. May the God of mercy come through for you. In the name of Jesus Christ. When I began to sense in my heart that God would have me leave Zaria to Abuja, I loved Zaria so much. I mean, ministry was going exceptionally well. God was doing something within that region that I had not seen since I came there. It was, it, was a, it was a season of phenomenal ministerial strides. How does God come in the midst of nothing and now says, I struggled with God for three years. And there are prayers where you say, God, confirm. You have asked for trouble. God will confirm it anyway. You will use dreams, a scripture, visions, enemies, friends. Everything will confirm it. God for you it's interesting to know how i finally camped in abuja it was during covid 
I just returned from London where the last sets of people to leave and I thank God for that. I would have been trapped in that place for three months. I returned back to Abuja preparing to go for a miracle service in Zaria when they just announced the lockdown. We said nobody is going anywhere. I stayed in Abuja and that was it. You see that now? But I used that opportunity alone. I started praying. And God said, finally, now that I have your attention, this is the new season finally we're stepping into. Okay, I started praying. By the map of Abuja, the map of Nigeria, the map of Africa, the map of the globe. Keep praying on it. That is your assignment. I look at myself now and wonder, what if I resisted and say, you don't know what you are doing. You, don't, you are not in Zaria, oh God. I'm the one who knows what is happening. He will leave you. But you will see that you will keep seeing things in the spirit that you are rising and it will never manifest for some of you after this conference go for a retreat bring your major plans for this year and for the next 10 years don't assume take this as a prophetic instruction don't assume you are about to take decisions that affect your establishment don't hurry decisions no is what it to if you get a decision right it can redeem 20 years you miss out on a decision is like the hand of the clock it will come back but time will be lost and destiny is measured as a unit of time who is god speaking to please go for a retreat so after this conference thank god for the women go for a retreat lord i'm not going to make this major financial decision major marital decision major ministerial decision i cry unto you the god of all grace speak to me what is the next season of my life church is quiet i'm assuming that the word is entering your spirit praise the name of the lord that's why you can see ordinary people who don't look like it but their decisions are always destiny defining you know why they have mastered the art of engaging this prayer god should i pursue should i overtake should i pursue you will see a building that does not make sense and the spirit of god tells you let's go to the place of prayer fast for two days by the second day god will tell you this building you see a company is coming to buy it in two months buy it now you will sell it for 10 times the price buy it now other people they leave all these carcass but because you had him you can just go with childlike faith and even make a deposit just to trap it down two weeks later people are calling you and saying xyz you say i can't believe it is it a scam they say no they need this building whatever price name your price add profit add commit add everything we still want it and someone will look at you and say how how is your life working like this the power of hearing from god this is the model that many of our fathers in the faith taught us they would tell you god said this look at where rccg is for instance you know every time i have the opportunity to pass that place i imagine if god told me to go to that place i will most likely disobey honestly i'm being sincere with you under god i will most likely i'll ask him for forgiveness later on but most likely i would have disobeyed when you see the end point of prophecy it looks glorious but you rewind in your mind and see that bush that's when you see the power of hearing god but i know whom i have believed and i am persuaded that he is able to keep that which is committed unto him against that day behind the giant strides that trail believers is obedience to something they are sure god said can i tell you this if you take a step knowing and or believing it was god that led you and god sees the sincerity of your heart even if you are in error he would defend you for his namesake this is one thing i know about god that means if i walk through this led believing that it was a door and believing that it was god that told me to walk there god will carry a door and put there for my sake to make sure that it is not that i trust in him is a risk look at what he told peter if it be thou bid me come peter verified this is an example of such prayer peter said tell me if you are the one and he said come peter took the step of faith 
but because he was sinking god took responsibility it was at my word and he held him don't be afraid of obeying god there is a system to defend his name in your life sometimes when you become too calculative and scientific okay god you've told me this but let's consider we'll review this again in 2027 it won't work that way there are times you have to trust god and walk on water this is a word for someone you have to trust god and walk on water being unnecessarily scientific will not get you forward he said register the company don't ask questions go and register the company where will i get the contract leave that to god you take a step of faith he says go for a three-day retreat don't say god what for is disobedience you just go there first after the first day you are prayed you are hungry you don't even know what you are doing in that room you just stay there the answer is coming hmm. let me give you the last one you agreed with me this morning to challenge your prayer life oh, i hope we're still together yes, let's review number one praying in the spirit number two Number three, the prayer of inquiry. Can I give you number four? The second, the fourth model of prayer is warfare. 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 This one I would not even be tempted to delve in. I would just touch it in a hurry. Else we'll spend the whole day here. Warfare. Prayer. Warfare prayer. Philippians chapter 1 and verse 19. The assignment of warfare prayer is to establish the realities that have been finished in Christ. To make them manifest in your life. I like how the Bible puts it. To turn anything to your salvation is the assignment of warfare prayer. Warfare prayer is not about fighting demons. It's not about fighting spirits. It's establishing the victory that is already wrought in Christ. Are we together? over spirits over situations over circumstances i like the way the bible puts it to turn things for your salvation it says for i know that this shall turn to my salvation how through your prayers and the supply of the spirit of jesus christ i know that this disappointment i know that this attack my god there are things every believer must know i know that this family crisis i know that this court case the assignment of warfare is to turn anything to your advantage anything anything to your advantage there are times when you come close to a tree when you don't pluck the fruits on time they start rotting and they fall to the ground but the earth has a unique way of turning everything to the advantage of the soil are we together it now becomes manure something that you see bringing flies and smelling around and the earth is not threatened by it it's a mentality you must have as a believer you must look at everything from the standpoint of god's sovereign plan there is still a way god can get glory from this you were sent away from your work okay the deed has been done what else can be done from this i know that even in the midst of this it can still turn for my salvation this was paul's mentality when he got into prison he would not sit down and say god why me he would use the opportunity in the prison because he knew something he would write letters to the churches and say i hear that you are misbehaving i'm soon coming out of this prison i will come and visit you but in the meantime correct this correct that he was a man who knew that to live is christ and even to die is gain you must know this warfare prayer is predicated on an understanding that all things work together for good please hear me to them that love god not to everybody all things work together for good to them that love god and to them who are the called according to his purposes believe that all things are working for your good truly believe it the disappointment the joblessness including what you think is happening nationally lord i don't know how you do this but because i am the called it must work for my good in the name of jesus christ work for my good and you engage in the place of prayer are we together yeah 
scriptural prayer model you may want to correct that i see someone projecting my message scriptural prayer models ends with an s scriptural prayer models please thank you scriptural prayer models warfare now there are people who do not believe in warfare prayer it depends on what you call warfare i personally do not believe in an endless struggle of fighting demons and fighting spirits with no victory in view that becomes an insult to what christ has done on the cross are we together yes however let me assure you that nothing gets established on its own satan and all unclean spirits are stubborn spirits meaning that they have a passion to insist on your pain until you disengage them by light i desire to come to you even i paul once and again he said but satan hindered us knowing that victory has been wrought in christ does not threaten satan is engaging and appropriating that victory that threatens him satan is not afraid of scripture he's afraid of the believer who understands how to engage scripture for your profiting hallelujah he will kill anything he's allowed to kill steal anything he's allowed to steal and you believe me on this destroy anything he's allowed to destroy this is the assignment of warfare prayer haven't done all to stand stand don't assume that god loves your children so much they will be nice wonderful and disciplined people engage in the spirit when you see the cloud when you see the formation of darkness that is the time to take on your priestly regalia and get to the place of prayer the bible says if you turn aside in the day of adversity there is a day in everybody's life called the day of adversity you don't have to be good or bad he informs you pre-informs you so that number one you build prayer strength prayer power for those days and that when those days come you can engage there are times that it looks like all hell have chosen to break loose over you your marriage your children your health are we together now you must know how to engage warfare prayers warfare prayers are serious times of spiritual adventure usually they do not go with you praying alone there are times you need to draw for the support of other brethren people who love you and understand because you need to engage with power warfare prayer this is very important jesus is about to go to the cross and he goes to gethsemane and the bible tells us that he locked up himself and he was praying until the the um the sweat became like blood dripping from him the question is what kind of prayer is that that the word incarnate the very son of god there have been times in my life where i had to engage that kind of prayer let me give you two information about warfare prayer every time seasons are about to change this is the kind of prayer you need to engage in because satan will always start at stand at the corridor of new seasons birthday periods anniversary periods do you know it was during i told you yesterday it was during a man's birthday that a prophet's head went away i have taught my people and trained them that before you celebrate your birthday if your birthday is on the 12th by 9th or 10th or 11 you should have some time of retreat now not many it's not a, it's not a scriptural injunction it's just a prophetic guide i don't believe in people sleeping and snoring themselves into defining seasons no that is a careless christian in my opinion honestly honestly when jesus was born there were reactions in the heavens when jesus was about to be commissioned there were reactions when jesus was about to start the core of his assignment his passion there were reactions when he died there were reactions when he resurrected there were reactions on the day of pentecost there were reactions there are certain kairos moments in our lives where you cannot afford to slumber while men slept there are defining seasons in your life you are about to celebrate your birthday take at least one or two days let the people celebrate you lock yourself and pray especially where you are striking very very notable you know points in life 
these are survival strategies everybody who wants to live serving the purposes of the kingdom and to walk in victory must understand warfare prayer i will never allow satan come and roam around my vicinity unattended to i have the responsibility of sanitizing my spiritual atmosphere and i must do that without fail he will not respect the fact that you are a man of god that is not his business i think i may have said it here let me say this and then one point and we'll wrap up there are spirits listen please there are spirits that are assigned to believers the moment you get born again there are demonic spirits assigned to sabotage the purposes of god in your life number two there are spirits that are assigned to ministerial offices they are not assigned to individuals they are assigned to whatever of if god has called you to be an intercessor there are spirits that will look for you you don't have to call them they will come they were sent to pursue every intercessor because the devil knows the power of prophetic intercession. There are spirits that are assigned to regions. So you relocated to Lagos. Welcome. But there are spirits. It's not only Bureau of Statistics that are where you came. There are spirits who are where you have arrived. Do you know why? They begin to mold you to look like the deformities within that territory if that territory is known for poverty if you like be a multi-millionaire if you don't have spiritual intelligence you can step into that territory and mysteriously things will start going bad it's true it's true one court case after another one trouble after another or they will tell you that three of your relatives need a kidney transplant sixteen thousand per one can you bring out 50 million and all these troubles just plague you in a moment you try to look like the spirit of the region i wish i were lying to you i would have just told you i'm sorry but it's true that also includes overseas so overseas does not have a special closeness to the throne room no it's just that the people are a lot more enlightened than we are now and their policies work a lot better than it does here but as far as the attack of spirits the whole earth lies in wickedness you will find spirits everywhere now imagine the spirits that attack you as a believer then a man of god spirits that attack families because there is a prophet there is an apostle that is coming there and you don't even know where the attack is coming from you would have looked at all of these people in the bible and seen the kind of attack that came over them what is that what am i looking for now i'm sure mary would look at her child and say why do they want to kill my baby as for me i've made a covenant with god that for as long as i'm alive i will keep satan far from my life the ministry god has given me and everybody god has brought under my care i take it as a responsibility one thing i can tell you satan is not he's not a friend he's not an advisor there is no discussion you should have with satan he is evil the epitome of evil he will kill anything he's allowed to kill i've been sick before i know what it means to have mysterious infirmities warfare prayers let me give you the final one has god spoken to someone How many have we considered? Number one, praying in the spirit. Number two, declaring scriptures in prayer. Number three, the prayer of inquiry. Number four, warfare prayers. Number five, and this will be the final one. There are many models, but I'll stop here. The prayer of thanksgiving. Hmm. I will tell you how this prayer works. Very powerful. The prayer of thanksgiving. Colossians 4 and verse 2. Let's read together. Ready? One, two, go, please. Continue in prayer and watch in the same with thanksgiving. One more time. Continue in prayer and watch in the same with thanksgiving. He says, continue in prayer and while you watch, engage. Add to that prayer model thanksgiving 
let me tell you how this prayer works you convert your request to thanks as an act of faith father i thank you because i am the head and not the tail are you getting that now i thank you because in the name of jesus i am blessed i thank you because i declare that it is well with me so it's it's like you are adding declarations but this time around thanksgiving is what ushers what you are saying lord i give you thanks there are times that your entire prayer scope can just be god i thank you the thanksgiving can come in a song the thanksgiving can come in a dance the thanksgiving can come usually this kind of prayer is backed up with giving please listen you want to engage this prayer model it does not just end by saying thank you usually in the midst of your praying god will place it in your heart to support that prayer with a seed with understanding it's true continue in prayer and watching the same with thanksgiving philippians chapter 4 and verse 6 be anxious for nothing the bible says but in everything by prayer and supplication you see there again with thanksgiving connect thanksgiving to the prayer he said let your request be made known unto god father i thank you because the bible declares many are the afflictions of the righteous but the lord delivered them from the, him from them all i thank you because i'm delivered i'm escaped like the bird escapes from the snare of the faller i thank you because my day is blessed i thank you because it is well with me it is well with my children thanksgiving is what proceeds from that prayer and sometimes when you don't have anything to say you sing your thanks you dance your thanks it is still prayer a powerful prayer model in fact hallelujah i think it's god's servant bishop david Oedipo, who said the last digit in the in the thanks in the faith equation is thanksgiving you know like you press a number zero eight zero seven 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 one one two that two that last digit is thanksgiving 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 is one of the pillars that sustain joy when you give thanks it can turn mourning to dancing it can turn sorrow to joy because thanksgiving mandates first that you reminisce on the faithfulness of god past it's impossible to give thanks without recalling the things he did yesterday in as much as you are trusting him to do something now thanksgiving lord i thank you for what you did yesterday i thank you for my children now they are looking for jobs but i thank you because while they were in secondary school there was a time i did not even know where their school fees would come from lord i give you praise that all these children today that my son is a professor today i remember when he was expelled in the secondary school you have turned my son today to be a preacher i want to give you thanks and it is on account of that i can thank you for what you are already doing in his life lord i thank you for my grandchildren and someone thinks you are just praising god you are actually praying it is a powerful prayer model hallelujah where you bless him from your heart where you cry thanksgiving from your heart you wake up in the morning this is a great day lord i thank you it is only those who are alive that can praise you i want to tell you thank you because you have given me breath i know there are still issues around my life but i take the time to say thank you i take the time to say thank you we're about to pray i hope you'll be able to select at least one of these models and use while we pray if you pray in the spirit alone you are doing malpractice you must practice the remaining four all of us can pray in the spirit that one is the holy spirit engaging <laughs> are we together for someone perhaps you may start with the prayer of thanksgiving i see people dropping their prayer request okay so let's do that if you are praying if you are dropping your request you can drop that so that we do this in the next five minutes or thereabout and we're done is it all right if i request that we okay let me just give you one minute to write your prayer request please um ushers if you can allow people to write maybe help someone with a piece of paper it doesn't matter how now you can pray in the spirit while you are writing science has proven that you can pray in the spirit and write it doesn't disrupt your ability to write hallelujah 
let me recap the prayer models that i've taught you so far number one praying in the spirit praying in tongues number two declaring scriptures in the place of prayer number three engaging the prayer of inquiry asking for answers insisting that the answers come because with those answers directions come number four warfare prayers establishing realities as finished in christ even against principalities powers and antichrist hindrances to your life and destiny and finally the prayer of thanksgiving the prayer of thanksgiving i want you to add something to that fifth point Praying with thanksgiving. I want you to understand it when you are reading it later on. Praying with thanksgiving. Not just the prayer of thanksgiving. So that if anybody is reading your note who was not here, they understand what you are saying. The prayer of thanksgiving is not just reminiscing on the goodness of God yesterday. It's adding thanks to your request. And so you speak them by faith as though they are already done. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Are we ready to rise and pray? If you are done writing your request, and by the way, I want you to believe. Please don't just write, believe. Truly, there is a God that answers prayers. If you are done, you can just wave it and someone will be available to pick it. Please, let's do that in one minute. Hallelujah. And for those who are connecting online, I'm not sure if you have a chance, you can post yours just online on the platforms available for you there. Else, you can just hold your prayer request as a sign of faith. And while we pray here, you can connect by faith, knowing that distance is no barrier, and God will step in for you. Please make sure you write. Whatever it is that ails you, whatever it is that has frustrated you're enjoying the greatness the glory the power of god petition that situation and let's watch the god who answers prayer okay we can stand to pray when we're done if you're done please stand and let's pray first prayer point we are going to obtain grace from God to begin to engage every one of these prayer models it takes grace from God to engage these models faithfully while we are waiting for those who are still dropping their requests go ahead and begin to pray ask the Lord for grace someone ask your maker the king of kings the king eternal ask him for grace the Bible says for everyone that asketh receiveth please ask him for grace father i receive grace my prayer life is fanned back to flames now that i understand these models of prayer in the name of jesus christ mention them one by one i obtain grace to pray in the spirit and to do so consistently i receive grace in the name of jesus who is the son of the living god to be full of the word that I'm able to make declarations, prophetic declarations, scripture-based declarations in the place of prayer. Someone pray. I decree and declare grace to inquire in the place of prayer, to pray inquiry prayers to pray inquiry prayers no more bad self-limiting choices and decisions obtain grace to engage in warfare prayers warfare prayers dethroning the cohorts of hell over your life the affairs of your destiny The prayer of thanksgiving.
Alléluia. Alléluia. Please hear me. Let me just give us one prayer point that God is putting in my heart, especially because it's a women program. I, I want every mother to pray for your children and to pray for your home. Um, I was speaking in the UK and I became very alarmed at the rate at which the devil is attacking children. Mental health. Many of them are getting into all kinds of Eastern religions, practices, and some of them come from well-grounded spiritual families. They are sent to school and after one year, they can call their parents and say, just to let you know, I'm not a Christian again. And don't you dare try to question me on it. Who we'll summon you and the powers that be, unfortunately, have created a system that makes this very easy. That children can disown their parents now, happily. And society can fund that misbehavior and allow things to run. Let's not take for granted. You remember when Moses met Pharaoh and said, let my people go. Pharaoh said, okay, here's what will happen. We will allow you go, but we'll keep the children. And Moses said, no way. Everybody is going. So whether or not you have biological children, we're going to pray for all the, the future of this church, this ministry, and every mother. If you don't have, you have siblings. If you are a young person here, you can pray over your siblings. But please, let's pray for one minute. Satan, thus far have you come. No further shall you go. Someone pray. Thus far have you come. No further shall you go. Thus far have you come. No further shall you go. Thus far have you come. No further shall you go. Go ahead. Pray for the children. Pray for the youth here at the king's court. Mothers, pray that everyone who came out from your womb will serve your God, will live for God, will serve the purposes of the kingdom. It will not be that because you gave birth, society became worse. It will not be that because you had children, you died early. It will not be that because you had children, you backslid spiritually because of frustration. Someone don't be silent. Pray. As for me and my house, we will serve the Lord. As for me and my siblings, as for me and my spouse, as for me and those that God has put within my care. Take a minute to pray. Take a minute to pray. Take a minute to pray. Shabaka parakatoska pres. Rakata preka parakatoska parakos. As for me and my house, we will serve the Lord. As for me and my children, we will serve the Lord. Hallelujah. In Jesus' name. Please hear me. Don't be offended at this statement, but it is not the usual for parents to still remain greater than their children when they become adults. No. Are we together? No matter how great the parents are, according to God's destiny program, one day the children should rise and become like a giant oak tree. But you see what Satan is doing now? You can find a child that is almost 50. He still say, mommy, can you please help me with 2,000? It's a cause. I tell you, it's a cause. It's a cause. Are we together? That no parent should be the one still feeding their grandchildren. They are alive for and still feeding their grandchildren. Hallelujah. Father gave birth to his children in that one room or that two bedroom flat. The child grew up, married, he's still in that house, and now they're about to have their grandchildren. It is not the way God works. Don't feel condemned if that's your situation. I'm just saying that's not how God works. Someone say, Father. Father. Please shout it. Say, Father. Father. In the name of Jesus, Amen. let my children be greater than me. Go ahead and pray. In my lifetime, let me see that greatness. Not when I die, 
in my lifetime let me see the greatness of my children in my lifetime let me see the glory of god in the life of my children and my grandchildren this is the heritage of the saints someone pray seriously in my lifetime in my lifetime let me see the glory of my child let me see the glory of my daughter let me see the glory of my grandchildren let them build in my lifetime let them marry in my lifetime let them have children in my lifetime let them serve god in my lifetime let the nation celebrate them in my lifetime not when i go to my grave Please pray every cause every yoke that makes one generation to be less than the other I come against it in Jesus name pray No, my children will be greater than me. Greater spiritually, greater financially, greater in terms of influence, greater in terms of advancement. Please pray. In Jesus' name we pray. In Jesus' name we pray. It is an evil that has destroyed many parents and grandparents in old age where they are supposed to be resting. All that frustrates them. Do you know what killed Eli? It was the issue of his children. Eli, he already suspected that these boys, those boys were supposed to take over from him. One of the greatest pain in, with the privilege that I've had counseling parents is the pain that they have in old age over issues of succession and the fact that there is nobody who can stand in defense to the family name because the the devil programmed that everybody who can uphold the name becomes a useless person it's an evil every time i read the story of eli i'm disturbed how does a priest become so worried the ark of god then his sons hophni and phinehas you see that and his daughter-in-law had to get into labor i'm not sure it was time but she got into labor because of that stress and she named the child ichabod he said because the glory of god has departed from israel that it should not be that in this family they were once people who serve god but now it has become a place of idolatry it should not be that somebody will look at you and say the trouble that started in your village happened when you gave birth that it was because your child came that means it would have been better you did not even give birth ah look at what naomi said naomi said call me mara don't call me naomi it is sadness and sorrow that has surrounded me my husband is dead all my children dead everything that represents myself what has died call me mara don't call me naomi you know what Mara means? Bitter. That means my entire life is like I was a bitter pill for people to swallow. One prayer point. You are going to pray for yourself. The Bible says, In thee shall all the families of the earth be blessed. Let's invest in one minute praying for all our mothers and aunties. Nobody will be called Mara. That the story of your life will not be a bitter testimony. Someone pray in one minute from the depth of your heart. Naomi was a good woman. Naomi was not an evil woman. But something plagued Naomi's life. All the supports in her life. She said, don't call me Naomi. Call me Mara. Every mother, every woman, every sister, every auntie, by the spirit of the living God.
your testimony will not be destroyed you will not be called Mara you will not be called Mara you will not be called Mara in the name of Jesus in the name of Jesus in the name of Jesus please hear me before I kneel to pray I stand agreeing with the grace upon the angel of this house please hear me if there is any family here and there is a cause you have seen that makes sure that parents never reap from their children I've seen that that even when the children rise just when they're about to be established something caught short the parents they die you believe me oh I know what I'm saying no the Bible says you will plant and you will reap do you believe that you will plant a stranger should not be the one now enjoying some you will labor you will sleepless night I forbid it for every mother here in the name of Jesus now that you are alive you will remain alive hallelujah there are spirits that search for families search for great destinies their assignment is to frustrate that family that parents in old age when they should be resting one report after another everybody you raise both biological and other children everybody disappoints you Appa, one person has to fear god enough are we together do you know why many parents just leave courses as they go to their grave it's not supposed to be so when parents are about to go it's a time to bless but is the pain they have gathered for 50 years 60 years they just leave a course i remember true story many many years ago i know about a woman her son kept bringing pain and embarrassment and one day in anger she cursed him she said until the day a rat stops stealing that is the day he will stop stealing do you think any mother who want to say that but this is what happens when pain happens i'm saying it again every programming to waste your remaining days that it will be spent in pain in regret i cry unto my god may he avert it on time may my god avert pain on time avert shame on time i say it again avert pain on time avert shame on time Avert pain on time. Avert pain on time. Avert pain on time. In the name of Jesus. Your children will not bring you shame. People will not be calling you to use your life as a lesson to warn other people in the name of Jesus Christ. And I want to pray for every young person here whatever wants to slow down your rising to make sure until your parents die before you rise that you have you have promised mama you will build for her it's not because she needs the building that you are giving them a taste of their sacrifice i have the privilege and the honor of having my parents alive and i'm grateful to god that i can do the bit that i do for them when i see the joy and the smiles on their face on account of what God has helped us become it gives me joy even as a son are we together now yes he says satisfy me early is someone ready to pray that prayer don't be tired though we are wrapping up but this is you are beginning with destiny in a profitable way I pray for every young person here whatever has stopped you 10 years you have graduated but not the first job you are in lagos a place of plenty i call upon my god in the name of jesus christ that in this year 2024 may my god sort your life believe it may my god sort your life listen the bible says the increase in the field is for all not for some the increase in the field is for all that even the king is fed by that which comes from the field 
every opportunity in nigeria or the globe is not for a special group of people no sir no sir is for everyone you must be angry and force your portion out of destiny are we together i say it again in the name of jesus every young man here and parents you can agree for your children whatever is making them slow in destiny crawling through destiny we pro we pronounce speed speed of establishment speed of accomplishment in the name of jesus christ Thank you, Jesus. We're going to pray over this now. I believe everybody has their request. Why do we pray on this? Because number one, God tells us to make our request known. No assumptions. And I like to pray on requests like this. You know why? Because this is the most accurate expectation or ex expression of your expectation. Nobody's going to read it. This is between you and the God of heaven. But I like you to pray. Tell him, Lord, for the sake of your glory, let there be answers to this prayer. Go ahead and pray. For the sake of your glory, let there be. Please go ahead and pray. Just take one minute. I'm laying my hands on this request, praying on them. Worthy is your name, Jesus. You deserve the praise. Worthy is your name. Worthy is your name, Jesus. You deserve the praise. Worthy. One more time. Worthy is, Worthy is your name. Jesus. You deserve. Hallelujah. 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 I'm not a prophet of doom, but I'm going to say this. I just saw something that I, I trust. I know God wants to avert it. I'm looking at a truck that carries goods, like maybe biscuits or something. I'm seeing it collide with a Corolla car and everybody in that car dying. I pray in the name of Jesus Christ. Nobody here, nobody here it will not be said anybody here died please don't be afraid i'm not a prophet of doom but when god reveals like this whether it's for you or for your loved ones i say it again from now till the end of the year you will not bury anybody not by accident not by sickness in the name of jesus hallelujah hallelujah it will not be that your child will go out in the morning and you will not find the person again 
in the name of Jesus. Listen, let me tell you. People related to me, I remember one of my dear sons in ministry, they were coming back from a program and they just called me. I think it was from, where was that? They just ambushed all of them and kidnapped the first vehicle could run away but they kidnapped the other ones and i they just said within 24 48 hours the first thing was about at 50 million or so they said if it's not brought they would shoot everybody one by one and these people are heartless people let me tell you the truth they would do it eventually like that people had to beg i will not tell you how much i had to pay eventually as ransom evil is bad oh evil is bad is the reason why believers must receive prophetic words your whole savings can go in one day because of the evil heartedness of someone i say it again you will not sow for another man to reap you will not sow for another man to reap you will not sow for another man to reap in the name of jesus your going out is blessed. If you leave your house, you must return back. I say to a believer, if you leave your house, you must return back. And for every request that is here represented in the name of Jesus, no matter what that situation is, we call upon the God of heaven to turn this request to answers. Speedy answers in the mighty name of jesus in the mighty name of jesus i use this opportunity to pray for the foundations of sapphire eight this is eight years am i right eight is the number of new beginnings everything that represents the old old pains old wounds old shame we declare let it go with yesterday welcome to your new season season of grace season of speed season of breakthrough greater capacity in the spirit greater unity among the women in the name of jesus shout amen seven times let's give jesus a big hand clap hallelujah praise the name of the lord now they didn't request that i do this but i want to challenge someone and my apologies if i break any protocol but i want to challenge someone as god has placed in your life i want us to honor these mothers by sowing into the foundation of sapphire i'm not going to ask you to give anything it's between you and god but you see it's a responsible christian practice it's not about money many of these mothers and even the ministry is blessed but this is why many believers don't grow once you receive from a stream you sow into that stream are we together now so let me challenge them don't say my mother is part of the foundation that's not the issue as i'm saying this i know by myself i will also honor the instruction because it's coming from god don't come and receive you have learned about prayer you have learned about so many things don't watch the foundations of sapphire and just come and say wow god bless the mothers and leave responsible christianity mentors people to know how to respond i'm saying it again it's not about money but it's about a sense of responsibility so the details are there as god places in your heart make sure your seed no matter how great no matter how small let something leave you to connect with the grace that has made this happen this is what the bible teaches do you believe that are we in agreement on it and don't say i don't have much that is the reason why many people don't grow no your one naira your one dollar your ten dollar your one thousand whatever it is that god places in your heart this is for our mothers this is as a seed to honor god and to thank his grace over the foundations of sapphire thank you for making this happen 
thank you for helping me understand god use the platform of this to help me understand prayer to help me understand the greatness of god my spiritual life has been enhanced i have experienced his hand how do you just fold your arm and share the grace and walk away it doesn't work like that when he came to cornelius he said your prayers and your arms this is how it works thank you so much our dear mothers and aunties thank you for this honor you have given me may the lord bless you in jesus name